a very good evening aspirants as you all know prelims is coming nearby it's fastly approaching and shankara is academy has launched free all india prelims mock test and these tests will be conducted across 13 centers both online and offline modes and if you are wondering when it will be conducted it will be conducted on 15th may 2022 22nd may 2022 and 29th may 2022 I'll give you the link in the description <clears throat> so please make use of it and with this information now let us get into the daily hindi news analysis for the date 2nd of may 2022 displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today see first of all we are going to discuss a previous year prelims question and then we are going to get into the article discussions and at the end of the discussion we are going to solve some of the prelims questions and i'll give you a mains question for your practice also and we'll wind up the session without any delay let's get into the article discussion now we'll discuss this previous year prelims question that was asked in the year 2019 see this question is a history based question to be more specific this is a culture based question see when it comes to upsc buddhism and jainism area is very important so concentrate more on that you can expect at least one question from this area now let us try solving this question here if you know what mahayana buddhism is and if you know what are the characteristics of mahayana buddhism then it is a very easy question for you because the statements given here describe the attributes of mahayana buddhism but let us say you do not know anything about mahayana buddhism then how should you approach this question i'll tell you see it is not very difficult What is the first statement here? It says that deification of Buddha is one of the features of Mahayana Buddhism. So what is deification here? It is the process of making someone or something deity or god. So this statement is saying that Mahayana Buddhism makes Buddha as god. So the statement one may or may not be true. Now let us see the second statement. It says treading the path of bodhisattvas. here it means following the path of bodhisattvas this also may or may not be true let us leave this statement for now now let us see the third statement it says image worship and rituals are the features of mahayana buddhism see here only we have to be very careful because in this question there is a connection between statement 1 and statement 3 Statement one says deification of buddha and third statement says image worship and rituals See only when statement 1 is true 3 can be true this means only when buddha is considered as god there will be image worships and rituals right if he is not considered as god then there won't be any image worship or rituals so there are two probabilities here in the answer both 1 and 3 should be there or both should not be there let us consider both the scenarios here Firstly let us say statement 1 is wrong then statement 3 is also wrong and both statement 1 and 3 should not be in the answer so search in the options whether 2 only is there or not it is not there right now we'll consider the second probability which is considering statement 1 as the right statement then statement 3 should also be correct right so now search in the answer where any option has both statement 1 and 3 Yeah there is option D has both 1 and 3 so that is only the right answer and this is how you should approach a question and don't panic if you didn't study the topic try to narrow down the options here in this question we directly arrived at the answer right because we searched for the options where there are statement 1 and 3 option D had both statement 1 and 3 so we directly arrived at the answer but there will be instances where you will only be able to narrow it down to two options say you will be able to narrow it down to a b or b c or c d or something like that but then also don't worry take an educated and informed guess you have 50 50 chance of getting the answer right so we solved this question here i have given some of the features of mahayana buddhism here just go through it and use this opportunity and revise the topic again Look at this text in context article. See, it talks about the recent distress of the jute industry in West Bengal. See, the distress is due to several reasons like greater prices of raw jute, cyclone Ampen in May 2020, and the subsequent rains. Also, Bangladesh provides cash subsidies for varied semi-finished and finished jute products. Hence, the competitiveness emerges as a challenge for India. See the challenge lies in exploring export options to compensate for the domestic scenario. 
and this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us discuss about the jute crisis in detail first of all what is the problem here see here the problem is high procurement price of raw jute see this is so high that it is greater than the price of the processed jute or jute products so it simply means that the price of the raw material is greater than the finished product to understand this we have to know the process behind this procurement see in case of jute the mills procure raw jute from the middlemen and what do the middlemen do the middlemen procure jute from the farmers and after this it is baled see here baling is a process by which large bundle or package is prepared for shipping storage or sale that is the fiber is tightly compressed into bales and secured by wires and finally the bales are brought to the mills here the middlemen charge a price for all these services provided by them in addition to the msp fixed by the government see msp that is the minimum support price for raw jute procurement from farmers is increased to 4750 per quintal for 2022-23 season and it was fixed by the government See, I have given figures here for the year two thousand twenty-one, twenty-two. You could see how the MSP is increased. And note that in addition to this MSP, the mills have to pay service charge for the middlemen. Now you may have a doubt: Why is this price increasing? And what happened to the supply? The main reason was the occurrence of Cyclone Ampen in May twenty twenty, and the subsequent reason in the major jute producing states. See these events. they led to lower production and yield compared to the previous years and also they led to the production of lower quality jute fiber and why is this see this is because of the water logging situations in large fields and they led to premature harvesting and with this understanding now let us see the ideal condition for the jute cultivation see jute grows well on well drained fertile soil in the flood plains Here the soils are renewed every year, and the next condition is the requirement of high temperature during the time of growth. Now you know why the cyclone Ampen costed so much for the jute industry. See this map here; it shows the major jute producing states in India, which includes West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Odisha, and Meghalaya. Note that West Bengal, Bihar, and Assam alone account for almost ninety-nine percentage of India's total production. See, in addition to the lower production and yield, there were hoarding issues at all levels. That is right from farmers to the traders. And what is meant by hoarding? See, hoarding is the purchase and storing of large quantities of the commodity with the intent of benefiting from future price increases. So this is also. another reason and the last reason is the subsidies provided by the bangladesh government see bangladesh provides cash subsidies for varied semi finished and finished jute products hence the competitiveness emerges as a challenge for india see these reasons they can be more understood once you know the global position of india in the jute production see this image here shows you india's position in jute in the global market As per the Food and Agricultural Organization (FAO), India is the largest producer of jute, followed by Bangladesh and China. However, in terms of acreage and trade, Bangladesh takes the lead. Bangladesh accounts for three fourth of the global jute exports when compared to India. See, this is because India lags behind Bangladesh in producing superior quality jute fiber. And what is the reason for this? The reason for this low quality production is the infrastructural constraints relating to retting, farm mechanization, etc. And it is also due to the lack of availability of certified seeds and varieties suitable for the country's agro climate. So these are all the constraints that are in the jute industry. Now let us see some of the uses of jute. Firstly, it is used for packaging purposes. See, there is mandatory provision to use jute in packaging. It is mentioned in Jute Packaging Material Compulsory Use in Packaging Commodities Act, nineteen eighty seven. It says that hundred percentage production of food grains and twenty percentage sugar production must be packaged in jute bags. 
and other than this it is used in furnishing materials fashion accessories floor coverings or varied applications in paper and textile industries and now comes a question what if the jute mills are closed due to crisis see the jute sector it provides direct employment to 3.70 lakh workers in the country and it supports the livelihood of around 40 lakh farm families hence the closure of mills is a direct blow to the workers and not only this indirectly it affects the farmers whose production is used in the mills and hence as a solution to all these problems and to increase the economic growth of the country the following measures have to be taken firstly application of jute area must be increased secondly india needs to work on quality by adopting new technologies for this jute research organizations must work together to utilize resources for the betterment of the industry and also government must take efforts in the r&d that is the research and development to strengthen the jute industry and this can be done by developing newer technologies and then diversifying the products and improving machinery through intensive modernization and all these will fetch more profit and also it has less market competition when compared to its synthetic counterpart this is because of its eco friendly property which has good prospects in the coming days and that's all about this article discussion in this discussion we saw the reasons for the crisis in west bengal and what are those the high procurement price of raw jute cyclone ampen and bangladesh providing subsidies for varied semi finished and finished products we saw the ideal condition for the jute production and after that we saw the major jute producing states in india and india's position in jute in the global market and we saw some of the uses of jute and finally we ended our discussion by seeing some of the measures to be taken to improve the jute industry and with these points in mind now let us move on to the next article discussion our next news article is going to be based on this image see in this image you can see at loggerheads a pair of black bucks locks horns this image was taken at the talchapar sanctuary in rajasthan's churu district so let us use this as an opportunity and learn some of the important facts about the black bucks see by its pronunciation don't think it is an insect the black buck or the indian antelope is a species of antelope native to india and nepal it was once widespread throughout the indian subcontinent now only scattered herds are found in protected areas in india and nepal it has become extinct in pakistan and bangladesh so know this if a statement is given in your prelims question that it is found in pakistan and bangladesh it is wrong now coming back to the article see they are active during the day and form groups consisting of only females males and bachelor herds the black buck is easily recognized and how it is recognized they are recognized through the dark brown to black color of the upper part of the males and apart from this the most striking feature of black bucks is the long spiraling horns of the adult male which have ridges from the base to the tip and remember females do not possess horns see mature male black bucks have a black and white coloration which is very different from the reddish yellow hue of immature males and females see here both males and females have white patches around their eyes on their inner legs mouth underside and on the rump see these animals they reproduce two young ones in a year and they carry their baby for 6 months see the territorial male black bucks reproduce in order to defend their territories which can be as small as 20 acres see they mark their territory by depositing dung middens and black preorbital secretions on the bushes and stems now we will see about the diet see the black buck they eat mainly grasses as summer dries these it eats more pods fruits and flowers it eats more browse and pods fruits and flowers they supplement their diet see black bucks they are timid at the feed stations and they will stand back while other animals feed see the black buck they are diurnal in nature as in they are active during the day though it becomes less active at noon black bucks are as fast as any antelopes and they rely on their eyesight to avoid danger it can run at a speed of 80 km per hour they inhabit grassy plains 
and thin forest areas with easily available water resources. The herd size largely depends on the availability of forage and the type of habitat the black buck lives in. See, large herds, they have an advantage over the small ones. And in what sense? See, it is because they can detect danger or the threat faster. Now, coming to the last and the most important part, which is the conservation status. See, black buck is designated as least concerned according to the IUCN Red List. And in India, hunting of black buck is prohibited under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. And with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. In this, we saw some of the characteristics of black buck. We saw that they are native to India and Nepal. They became extinct in Pakistan and Bangladesh. And we saw some of the physical characteristics, diet and features of black buck. And finally, we saw the conservation status, which is least concerned according to IUCN Red List. And in India, it is protected under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. And with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. According to the article, top functionaries of the Union Labour and Employment Ministry have informed that the ministry is working on a mechanism to process accident insurance claims by unorganized workers registered on the eShram portal. So, this is the crux of the news article given here. Since Ishram is frequently in news, we might expect a question in the preliminary examination. So, let us quickly brush through some of the facts about this portal. See, this portal was launched six months back on August 26, 2021 and it has seen over 27 crore registrations so far. Here, Shram is a Hindi word and it means labor. So, it is basically an e-labor portal. To be very specific, post-pandemic, this portal was launched with the name of creating a national database of the unorganized workers and to facilitate social security schemes for them. See, this database will be seeded with the Aadhaar as well. In India, the workers in the unorganized sector have no social security coverage. So, the government must step in to provide them with the social security. But for this to happen, there must be a database of the unorganized workers, right? Only with the proper database can the government provide a well-formulated welfare scheme. And this is why eShram portal was launched. The eShram portal will help build a comprehensive national database of the unorganized workers in the country. So, it is the first ever national database of unorganized workers, including the migrant workers, construction workers, gig and platform workers, etc. See, the main objective of this portal is to improve the life and dignity of the unorganized workforce of our country. This portal contains details of name, occupation, address, educational qualification, skill types and family details, etc. Thereby, it helps to protect and safeguard the interest of the workers and to provide social security to labor force in the unorganized sectors. It also helps to enact and implement various labor laws which regulate the terms and conditions of the service and employment of workers. Some of the other objectives are given here for your reference. Just go through it. Having seen the objectives, now let us see the registration process. See, the registration is totally free and the workers do not have to pay anything. They can get themselves registered in any of the common service centers. Once a person gets registered in the eShram portal, a eShram card with a unique universal account number would be provided. Using this eShram card, workers will be able to access the benefits of the various social security schemes. And it can be accessed anywhere, anytime. See, getting registered with the eShram portal will come with the additional benefit of accidental insurance. If a worker is registered on the eShram portal and if that person meets with an accident, he will be eligible for 2 lakh on death or permanent disability and 1 lakh on partial disability. Now, talking about the eligibility, any worker who is working in the unorganized sector and aged between 16 to 59 is eligible to register on the eShram portal. Example, migrant workers, gig workers, platform workers, agriculture workers, MNRE GA workers, fishermen, milkmen, asha workers, anganwadi workers, street vendors, domestic workers, rickshaw pullers and other workers engaged in similar other occupations in the unorganized sector. And with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. And uh, in this discussion, we saw about the e-portal and the objectives of the e-portal and the registration process and the eligibility factor. So with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next article discussion.
Let us take up this news article for our next discussion. According to the article, the proposal to develop a jungle safari and trekking routes in Aravallis within Gurugram has been welcomed by wildlife and nature lovers and conservationists in the region. See, the idea is warmly welcomed with the expectation that the Aravalli's fragile ecosystem will not be disturbed once it is exposed to the commercial tourists. But still, wildlife specialists believe that making Aravalli a national park will better conserve its forest and wildlife. This is what the article says. In this backdrop, let us quickly go through some of the important facts about Aravalli ranges. Now look at this picture here. The map shows India's physical features. In that, on the left corner here, you can see the Aravalli ranges. See, Aravallis form a part of Peninsula Plateau. The Peninsula Plateau is a table land composed of old, crystalline, igneous and metamorphic rocks. It was formed due to the breaking and drifting of Gondwana land and thus making it a part of the oldest landmass. Yes, you can see the drifting of Indian plate in the image here. See, Indian plate was once a part of the Gondwana land and because of this reason, the peninsula plateau forms the oldest landmass in India. Now, talking about the Aravalli ranges, as I said already, they are one of the oldest fold mountains of the world and the oldest in India. See, they are aligned in the northeast and the southwest direction. They run for around 800 km between Delhi and Palanpur in Gujarat. They continue up to Haridwar. See, the range is prominent in Rajasthan. That is, they are continuous to the south of Ajmer, where it rises to 900 meter. But it becomes less distinct in Haryana and Delhi, where they are characterized by a chain of detached and discontinuous ridges beyond Ajmer. And talking about its elevation, see, its general elevation is only 400 to 600 meter, with few hills well above 1000 meter. At the southwest extremity, the range rises to over 1000 meter. Here, Mount Abu, a small hilly block, is separated from the main range by the valley of Banas. Here, Mount Abu, whose height is 1158 meter, is a small hilly block and it is separated from the main range by the valley of Banas. Gurushika, which is the highest peak, is situated in Mount Abu. And Gurushika, it is 1722 meter high. See Pipli Ghat, Devair and Desuri passes allow movement by roads and railways. Now let us see some of the significance of Aravalli ranges. Firstly, they act as a barrier to check further spread of desertification to the east of Rajasthan and subsequently to Gangetic Plains. The Aravalli acts as the barrier for the clouds to shift eastwards to the lower Himalayas thus contributing to the climate of North India as well. Secondly, they are responsible for the adequate monsoon rainfall and therefore sustaining a plethora of diverse flora fauna, rich biodiversity, livelihood and agriculture in the constituent states. Thirdly, major rivers such as Luni and Sabarmadi originate from the Aravalli range. And fourthly, it protects the plains from the effect of westerly flowing from the Central Asia region. And fifthly, the Aravalli, even with its shrinking forest resources, act as a buffer for the urban landscape to absorb the pressure and shock of the increasing anthropogenic activities and pollution. And finally, a greener Aravalli acts as a groundwater recharge for the region, facing acute water scarcity. And with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. In this discussion, we saw the physical features of India and one of that is Aravalli Ranges. We saw about Aravalli Ranges, its characteristics and features and finally we ended our discussion by seeing some of the significance of Aravalli Ranges. Now with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next part of our discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion. We have three prelims question today. One of them is a quiz question for you. Now let's start solving the questions. The first question here says that black bug sometimes seen in news is related to Chinese malware, an unidentified object, a species of antelope native to India and Nepal, name of a butterfly. See, it is a very easy question. From our discussion, we know that the correct option here is option C, a species of antelope native to India and Nepal. Now, moving on to the next question. See, this is a quiz question for you. 
Consider the following unorganized sectors. Statement 1. Asha workers, Anganwadi workers, MNREGA workers, gig workers, migrant workers. Which of the above sectors is or are eligible to register on the eShram portal? Think carefully and attempt the question and post your answer in the comment section. Now moving on to the final question, consider the following pass. See, this question contains mountain name and the type of mountain. Statement 1. Alps, Young Fold Mountain, Aravalli Range, Oldest Fold Mountain, Appalachians, Very Old Fold Mountain. Which of the following pairs are correct? See here all the given pairs are correct. See there are three types of mountains. Fold mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains. Himalayan mountains and the Alps are the young fold mountains with the rugged relief and high conical peaks. The Aravalli range in India is one of the oldest fold mountain systems in the world. The range has considerably worn down due to the processes of erosion. The Appalachians in North America and the Ural Mountains in Russia have rounded features and low elevation. They are very old fold mountains. So here the correct option is option C, 1, 2 and 3 only. I have given a mains question for your practice. So interested aspirants, write it and post it in the comment section. And if you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today, post that also in the comment section. And with this we have come to the end. If you find the video useful, please like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankara A's Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you.